Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. A digraph is when we use two characters of an alphabet to make one singular sound. There are many examples of this in English. Think of C and H coming together to make the CH sound, or even S and H to make the SH sound. We can even use two of the exact same letter to make an entirely different sound, like how two O's make the O sound. Digraphs are great because instead of making up new characters to fill up our alphabet, we can just put two we already have together, and when they are done working together, they can still be used separately to make their own sounds. This isn't always the case, however. One letter in the English language likes to be a bit difficult. It is never used on its own and can only be used as part of a digraph. That, of course, is the letter Q. In English, Q is only ever used in a word as part of a digraph. That digraph being Q followed by the letter U. Though, unlike U, Q can be used on its own. This means Q is pretty done dependent on U, while U can go around palling around with all the other letters. Not the best of relationships, that's for sure. The Q-U digraph makes a sound that could be compared to a K and W working together. It sounds like a K and W in words such as quick, quilt, quiet, frequent, and quail. However, this actually is not the only sound QU is able to make, as in some instances, it actually makes a hard K sound. Think of words like unique, or baroque, or liquor. Despite only ever being used along with U, Q does actually have a designated sound unto itself. It's something of a standard K sound. So while Q can make a sound all by itself, why don't we ever even use it? Why is it always followed by the letter U? And before you type your comments, yes, I'm fully aware that Q isn't always followed by a U in English. It just is most of the time. There are quite a few words we use in English that feature a Q not followed by a U. Wikipedia has a whole page dedicated to them. Words we use in English that feature a Q not followed by a U all seem to come from the same root. That root being the fact that they are words borrowed from other languages that do not follow our Q U rule. Perhaps the two most common ones are the country names of Qatar and Iraq. But there are also words like burqa too. One of particular interest is suk. A suk is a type of market, and what's interesting about this word is it has a U followed by a Q, the opposite order we tend to expect these letters to be in. Wikipedia also claims that there are just four words in English which have a Q not followed by a U which are not borrowed. Two of those are freak and trank, which are simply shortenings of frequency and tranquilizer. Another one is Kiana, a type of fabric created in the early 60s. Why it was given this name, however, I'm not too sure. And the final one is QWERTY, as in the first six letters of the keyboard which have taken on a life of their own. So from these, what you can gather is that words that feature a Q, not followed by a U in English, are either borrowed or rather modern constructs. So while we have some exceptions, by and large, Q is followed by U in English. That cannot be denied. And while this video will be focusing on English, please do let me know what kind of relationship Q and U have in your language down in the comments below. To understand this complex relationship, we have to look into the history of the letter Q. While we aren't sure on exactly where it comes from, most sources seem to point to the earliest ancestor of the letter Q being the Phoenician word of Kof. The Phoenicians were not so much one group or nation of people, but rather it's a word we applied to various ancient peoples who lived around the eastern Mediterranean and had something of a shared language and culture. Kof was the 19th letter of their alphabet, and we can see from its shape alone that it's the ancestor of our modern Q. While we aren't 100% sure on the origins of the shape of this letter, many sources believe it would have originated as a glyph of some sort, relating to a needle and thread, or sewing in general of some kind. This letter is thought to have made a very hard K sound, right from the back of the throat. Phoenician was a Semitic language, meaning it relates to modern languages like Arabic and Hebrew. These modern Semitic languages are also rather known for their hard K sounds. This really explains to us why so many of the words we use in English that feature a K without a U are borrowed from Semitic languages, like Arabic and their words of Qatar and Burqa. 
While this hard K sound is present in Semitic languages, it was not as commonplace in ancient Greece. What has that got to do with anything? Well, the early Greek alphabet was actually based on the alphabet of the Phoenicians. When these characters were adapted for the Greeks, some changes were made however. For the sake of this video, we only need to focus on one of those changes. That being the cough letter being changed into a letter called copper in the Greek alphabet. Copper once again made something of a K sound. If you hadn't guessed by now, Q and K have quite an intertwined relationship. K is actually one of the stranger letters to come about. It could honestly have a video unto itself. While copper made a K sound, so did the Greek letter of kappa. Having two letters make the same sound proved to not be too useful for the Greeks. To combat this, the Greeks decided that cap would be used in most cases when a hard K sound was needed. So what about copper then? Well, the Greeks decided that copper would still be used to make something of a K sound, but only when the K sound was preceded by a rounded vowel sound. Rounded vowels are the vowel sounds we make by putting our lips into a rounded shape unsurprisingly. A vowel that is often rounded is of course U. So when a word featured a K sound and a U sound, copper was used instead of kappa. This means that it was the Greeks that first placed Q and U together. Well, at least the ancestors of Q and U anyway. This is all well and good, except we have a slight issue. If you look at the modern Greek alphabet, you won't actually find the letter of copper. This is because over time the Greeks just felt they had no real use for this letter, so instead just flat out replace it with kappa. To the Greeks, copper was just redundant. Though while the Greeks may have found copper as being redundant, the Etruscans did not. The Etruscans were a civilization on the Italian peninsula that preceded Rome. However, they resided more on the northern half of the peninsula. The Etruscan alphabet was borrowed from the Greek alphabet, but they however borrowed it before the Greeks ditched copper. This meant that copper was a mainstay in their alphabet. The Etruscans kept the tradition of only using copper before a rounded vowel. In fact, they actually fine-tuned it somewhat. Instead of being used before any rounded vowel, they only used copper before an O or U sound, once again keeping the two letters together. While the mighty Roman Empire would eventually overtake the Italian peninsula, and so much of Europe, they actually adopted some things from the Etruscans. Most noticeably for us, the Etruscan alphabet was the basis of the Latin alphabet. However, some things did change in this transition. It was the Romans who gave Q the shape it has to this day, as they did many other letters. The Roman Latin alphabet also lacked a K, so when a hard K sound was needed, C was used in its place. This is why some believe Latin names like Caesar and Cicero should be pronounced like Caesar and Kikolo. Then, when the Romans needed to represent a not as hard K sound in the written form, they went with a Q and a U, which at the time was a V as we covered in our W video from a while back. The Romans did this simply because it was what the Etruscans and Greeks did before them when they wished to represent that sound. It was the Romans who seemed to have truly cemented Q being used exclusively with a U. This pretty much explains to us why Q is always followed by a U. Q and the sound it makes on its own had no real value to the Romans, and later on would have no value to us. There are other ways we can represent that sound in the written form, like with the letters of just K and C. However, the sound Q can make when attached to the letter U is rather unique and does have value to us. Because of this, Q is allowed to stay a part of the English alphabet, despite the fact its only purpose is to be paired up with you. While the Romans seemingly made this choice, there's still a long way to go from this being a mainstay of the English language. Rome would of course eventually come crumbling in on itself, and with the fall of Rome came the fall of Latin. Latin became a dead language, meaning no group of people spoke it as their native language. Though while Latin may have died, it left a huge legacy. Many languages evolved from Latin. We call these the Romance languages, as they relate to the Romans. Romance languages include the likes of Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, Romanian, and of course, French. Like with Latin, French also seems to exclusively use the Q when followed by U.
it would be the French language that would introduce Q followed by a U to the shores of Britain and into the English language. This was during the Norman conquests, which all kicked off in 1066. I am sure by now you all know the events of 1066. William of Normandy defeating King Howard to become King of England and in turn bringing the French language and culture to the island. The Norman conquest shaped so much of modern Britain. What's interesting is that the English language before the Norman conquest did actually have the QU sound in it. We've had queens over here long before the Normans arrived in 1066. So how was this sound represented in writing? Well, instead of using a Q and a U, a C and a W were used instead. This meant that words like queen were spelt as quen instead. I mean, it gets the job done, that's for sure. Perhaps in some alternative dimension, a queen is still spelt like this in English. However, thanks to the Normans all the way back in 1066, not only was Q added to the English lexicon, but so was the rule that it must always be followed by a U. What's also interesting is that the KW pronunciation of QU actually stopped being used in France after the Norman conquest. Instead, QU was pronounced with just a hard K. This explains to us why some words in English use the KW pronunciation of QU, while words borrowed from the French later down the line use just a hard K pronunciation of QU. It's safe to say that these two letters have been on quite a journey together. From Q's inception with the Phoenicians, it was then adopted by the Greeks who placed it with U. And from there, these two letters have travelled from Etruscan to Latin to French and finally into English. Though despite all the languages and nations they have had to go through to get to where they are today, they managed to stay together through thick and thin, despite U being in a bit more of an open relationship with all the other letters. Still, they managed to make it work. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad-free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and also join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain, both of which will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.